Thanks, Martin. And next up is Jeff Frankhauser, and he'll be giving a talk on stat moxing. Thank you. So uh, my name is Jeff Frankhauser. I'm an engineer for XKL, and we design optical networking technology. Our company was founded 15 years ago by the co-founder of Cisco Systems, and this is his next uh, company. Next slide, please. Okay. So um, when we look at the optical networking world, we see uh, explosive amount of band growth in, in the amount of applications, the distances, uh, the new protocols coming on board, the, the torrent of information that will be coming from the Internet of Things. And um, a lot of networks have you know, gone from 10 gig to 100 gig to 200 gig to on and on up to multi terabits. With the amount of information coming over the next many years, these networks are actually going to be continue to be constrained. You have business to business, you have machine to machine, all those things are, are taking place. And you have you know, the gains today are, are being made by you know, increasing spectral efficiency. We have the, the modulation schemes of DPQPSK, QAM8, QAM16, QAM32. And all those add spectral efficiency by the ability to increase your bandwidth by exponentially by tenfold. Um, however, within that spectral efficiency, in some cases, depending on the protocol, you're still at 50% of, of your transport rate. And so um, we feel that social lies within the ability to um, provide statistical multiplexing in the optical plane at, at layer one and, and do excessive bandwidth management um, without dropping a lot of packets and increase spectral efficiency by 100% without all the modulation schemes. Uh, they, they work very, very well, and we increase them into or we add them to our, our product set as well. However, uh, there's a point when you're moving so much data that you have to decrease the, the uh, distances between your amplifications. So your, your economies of scale begin to fail long term. So we've addressed that through integrated statistical multiplexing. It's been around for a long time. Most of the people that are in routers and switches know the technology quite well. So um, at, at layer one, we can increase the performance of your optical plane um, um, by increasing the data flows um, by moving more data across that, that spectrum. Currently, we can move 240 gig across the 100 gig transport, and that's without dropping packets today. Layer two equipment has you know, leveraged this technology um, for you know, 20 years or better, okay? And um, however, within that layer two function, there's a great deal of idle packets, especially at the ethernet level. So you have you know, your idle packets, you have your inner packet gaps, you have air packets on a per flow basis. And all that, um, actually decreases your bandwidth. So it's very, very inefficient um, at the uh, layer two, layer three, and layer one as, as the transport. So by allocating bandwidth for channels, uh, uh, validated statistical metric intelligence combines input traffic to maximize channel efficiency. So if we look at a typical flow of data across a, uh, a time division multiplex, and you can see the multiple flows of data here on, on the right and left-hand side. And then you can see as the data comes across, you have uh, data, idle packet, inner packet gap, data, and then on a per-flow basis. So you really have a very, very inefficient use of your uh, optical technology. And um, by integrating statistical multiplexing, we're able to take um, all those inter packet gaps, all that idle traffic, and uh, move that more efficiency across the optical plane. And so we get 100% efficiency of data on a per port, per flow basis. And we're doing at the layer one port level. So when we look at uh, the uh, percentage of traffic users, you have, you, know, you have multiple priorities or four priorities of traffic flows within uh, statistical multiplexing. You have your highest priority, uh, which could be a layer zero um, and, or layer two, layer three, layer four. And all those will provide a percentage of bandwidth usage across that optical plane. So you can set percentages on a per flow basis to be 25%, 50%, 75%, or 100%. And the uh, weighted round rob, deficit weighted round robin algorithm will allow that traffic to flow on, on a percentage basis uh, per port, per user. Uh, 
we have, you know, obviously the, the analyzers of traffic patterns, uh, the, the algorithm itself looks at all the traffic um, in parallel. So nobody's um, getting a scheduling or any type of things. Everything's done in parallel on a per port basis. So uh, with the classifications, we have you know, the 100%, the 75%, and the 50%, but all those are looked at equally across the entire optical plane. And the data uh, flow um, moves from 100% from to 25% um, as on a per class priority. So you would have your lowest class at 25%. Uh, you would have your uh, second class at 50%, third class at 75 and then 100% would give you 100% of the bandwidth on a per flow basis. And that's where we're at. Uh, questions? Thank you. <laughs>